Hello everyone, welcome to another Game Boy Studio tutorial. I'm Okami the Wolf One, and today we'll be looking at how to create enemy AI. So we're just going to run through a level here really quick. You can see, oh, I've got an enemy that runs up to me. She's got a knife. I can shoot her, and uh, she explodes. And we got another one who's a turret here. She's shooting at me. And I can shoot her, make her flash with invul invulnerability, and make her disappear. Oh, we got a different type that's running at me. And there's a turret. And as you can see, there is a bit of in invulnerability during the flashing sequence. Uh, I think there's another one, another runner, another turret. And then in here, we got a few more set up. Just running through the opening area. Here we've got oh, a landmine. Oh, took a hit there. And then if we go down here. Oh, what's this? We got a big, big turret here shooting these missiles. And whenever I get close. Oh. And then finally get to destroy them. So we'll be looking at today how to make these uh, basic enemies. So we're going to go right into Game Boy Studio here. And uh, first we're going to look at the really... We're, we're going to look at how to set up the sprites first, I think would be the best way. Um, in this case, we'll go over to the main one that you saw, the pheasants. And as you can see, I've actually got all the, all the characters on one sprite sheet. Uh, and there's a few reasons for this. Um, I've got them set to platform player, um, and I've got this uh, one with the white hair, this one with the black hair over one eye. Um, as you can see, there's a variant with a knife, there's a variant with a gun. Um, there's both like idle animations and a running animation, and there's the explosion animation. And so what I've done is I've basically mixed and matched in order to save sprites. As you can see right here, it says I'm using 32 unique tiles. And at best, you'll have maybe like 90 or 95 tiles for your level, maybe not even that many. So you really want to watch what you do with the uh, tile set. So uh, for a lot of these, they use the same uh, legs, like the same running animation, um, whereas the top might just be different. Um, and all of these animations are just two frames. It's like the knife running with the white hair, that's two frames. Uh, knife, gun standing, idling, two frames. Uh, running with the gun, two frames. Um, I've not used all four frames of explosion animation. I've actually only used uh, three of them. Uh, and I've been able to make it loop uh, very nicely. So what I've done actually here is I've set up different animation states we can see right here. So I've got, in this case, the default state was the uh, running with a knife. And then I've got this one that says boom. And that's just the explosion. So we play that as just exploding. Um, I have another one, gunner one, with both idle and run. Uh, gunner two, slightly different. And then knife runner two. It's the girl with the black hair running. So... I've set all of these up and basically you can do that by hitting this little plus sign here uh, for a new state and then you can go here and you can rename your state. Um, and of course they're all set to platform player. Um, one, another thing you want to watch as well is your uh, collisions. Uh, that's your hitbox. So as you can see it's, uh, it's pretty much exactly where you would expect the hitbox to be and you want to you wanna always watch that to make sure that's correct. Um, so if we go back into the game world, we'll look at the, uh, individual, uh, enemies one by one. So let's go over the coding that is shared between enemies before we look at the different code that makes the different enemies unique. So first we have this enemy. We have on initialize. We have the first variable, its first local variable, which is individual to each actor. I've set that as their hit points basically. So I've set it to one in this case. So that's this character's hit points. I've also set the animation state. In this case, I've set it to knife runner two because this is the second version of the character that runs back and forth with a knife. 
In this case, I believe it's the character with the black hair. I have on hit, if the character runs into the player, disable collisions, decrease the player's health by one. In this case, player health is a variable I've set to control the player's health. Uh, so I've had it decreased by one. Wait for one second and enable collision. And you really want to do that because otherwise uh, the collision, you will just lose health, like all your health in an instant, no matter how high your health is, it'll just go to zero like that. Um, and then we have for the different groups, because in this game, I've set all of the different ammo types to three different uh, collision groups so that when this character comes into a uh, collision with group one, it will do different damage than group two and three. And the coding is shared between all of them essentially, except for the hit points. Uh, let me just, there we go. So what I've done here, again, local zero is the variable that controls the player's, the enemy's health. And I've set this event group so that if health is greater than zero, you know, and there's a collision with the ammo type, uh, I've set it for group one at least to subtract one health, one from variable local zero, play the sound effect, in this case crash for half a second, uncheck wait until finished, otherwise it can kind of screw it up a little bit, uh, hide self, wait for a very short amount of time, show self, wait again, hide self, wait again, and show. And that will control the flashing animation. You could also, if you wanted to enable uh, invincibility for the actor, you could set it to disable collision, and then at the end you could hit enable collision. But if your character's health local zero is zero, uh, then stop on update script, which is really important because otherwise whatever you have on update will continue to run. If it's the character moving or it's the character shooting, they will continue to do that unless you disable the on update script. Disable collision so that you cannot accidentally take damage while they're dying. Uh, set animation state to boom which is the animation state I've set that shows the cloud of smoke that they explode into. Play sound effect, crash for half a second, wait for 1.1 seconds, and then deactivate self. And that will cause the enemy to disappear. I've added that short wait time because otherwise the uh, explosion animation won't be able to play out fully before the character just disappears. So... That's why I've set that. And I've set it for group two and three with the only difference being how much health they lose because in my game, Bazooka Bunny bounces back. She can have her infinite pistol ammo, which does one damage. You can buy magnum rounds, which do three damage, or you can get missiles, which do 10 damage. So I've attached the each ammo type to each collision group. Now that we've seen the coding that is shared between all of the enemy type, uh, let's take a look at the coding that makes each individual enemy different. First up is the running enemy. This enemy will run between two points, back and forth, bouncing back and forth between two points. In this case, on update, self move to one coordinate, and then self move to another coordinate. And the coordinates will vary between where you put your enemy in the level. I would suggest for to have the coordinates be no more than 20 tiles apart um, because the character is all characters are deactivated the moment they're off screen basically so there's no reason to have a character bounce between like 80 tiles like it's just it's not going to move unless the character is on screen and the screen itself is only I believe 20 tiles wide so I've found that 20 tiles seems to be about perfect and that's all you need and that is one enemy bouncing back and forth. Now, to make that a little more interesting, to have the turret enemy, all right? Very simple again. Uh, if their health is greater than zero, launch projectile, 
and wait for one and a half seconds and then they'll launch it again. So as long as they're on screen, every one and a half seconds, they'll be launching a projectile. We can vary it up actually. If we look at this uh, gator with a big rocket launcher on its shoulder, you can see I've set a trigger in front of it. So on update, or actually let's look at the trigger first. I've set this variable, enemy firing equals one, enemy firing equals zero. So on the enemies on update, I've set it so that if that variable enemy firing does equal one, then set the animation frame to one, fire the missile, wait for half a second, set the animation frame back to zero, and then wait for a second, and then it will loop again. I should note that the uh, reason we set the animation is because we only want it to play when he fires the gun, and initially his animation speed is set to none. So we are controlling every time that his animation frame changes. If you were to have multiple enemies in a level, then you could have multiple triggers and just set it so that it would loop back and forth between zero and two, or zero and three, and then just change the variable here in the individual enemy's code. And that's how to make a uh, enemy that only fires when you step into its trigger. Now, if you wanted to make an enemy that runs between two locations and fires a gun, uh, the code for that is, uh, again, extremely simple. In this case, I've got three self-move to scripts and two launch projectile scripts. And the self-move to, the, the coordinates for that is varies, of course, depending on your the location of your character within the level. And you have your launch projectile. Uh, of course, in the direction that the character is moving and whatnot. Now, an important thing to note is the reason I have three move to locations instead of just move to point A, shoot, move to point B, shoot, is because the character will move to point A and then shoot in the direction it was running, not the direction it is now turned in. So it will reach the outer edge and shoot outwards and then reach the other point and shoot outwards. So it will never shoot in between those two points. So by adding a, another point in between there, it stops it for a moment so that it can run the launch projectile script and shoot once more while it's inside of between those two points. You could add a few more of these scripts to kind of vary up where it's running. I do note that there is a slight animation hitch. The uh, I've got it running only two frames but for its run animation, but when it stops the self move and then launches and then moves again, it will skip a frame. It's not noticeable, you can't see it at all when the character uh, reaches the end point and turns around, but when it's continuing on the same direction, when it reaches that midpoint, it will skip a frame. It's so minor that I don't think it's worth trying to even like get rid of that minor, minor bug. You, you're missing one frame. And that's uh, essentially how you make a character that runs between two locations. Next up, we'll have one of my uh, personal favorites, uh, the landmine. And you can do this with any type of uh, trigger-based explosive uh, that you could imagine, really. Uh, it works the same for about everything. And this is really fun. Again, it depends on a trigger and the little uh, sprite itself. In this case, we'll, uh, let's just look over at the sprite. As you can see, the, the sprite itself is very large, but it's really it's just taking up this little bit because I've set its default state and an explode state where I've just used the same explosion from everything else, but I put it three times. Give it a nice little boom. Uh, so if we go back to the game world, so again, this mine, uh, this trigger, variable mine, on enter, set it to one, on leave, set variable mine to zero, real simple. The mine itself, uh, there's no on hit anything, uh, there's no collision on the mine, if you look, you can see I've set collisions disabled, animation speed to none. Because we don't, there's, there's, we don't want it animating yet. On update, if mine 
variable equals one. This is the variable that we trigger by walking into said trigger. Set animation speed to four. And as you saw from the sprite, the only other frame is one where the little top is lit up. So it's just flashing between a, like a little light on and off. Set it to set speed to four. Play sound effect. In this case, it's just a bunch of little beeps. Beep, beep, beep. And I've set it to wait until finish and 0.3 seconds. So I've done that three times. I changed the animation speed to six. So now it's flashing faster. Same with the, uh, the sound, three more sounds, but I've upped the pitch a little bit from uh, six to seven. Three more times. Set animation state to explode. I, I named this one explode instead of boom for some reason. Uh, and then it will play the uh, explosion animation uh, and it will enable collision. All right, so here's the thing. Because I've now enabled collisions, all of the explosions, if you are caught up in those explosions, you will take damage. Camera shake horizontally for just a little bit, 0.3 of seconds. Disable collisions, play sound effect, crash sound effect, reset the mine to zero, the variable mine to zero, and deactivate self. And that's how you can make uh, an exploding uh, landmine. I'm really happy with this one. I think this is uh, some of my best work. A few things to note. The coding for the damage that you take, the player takes from the enemies, is not actually on the enemies themselves, but on the level coding. So as you see, I have on player hit and the group and this event group. I've got player disable collisions, play sound effect, wait until finish has been unchecked, player bounce, deactivate player, wait for two second, point 0.2 seconds, activate, wait, deactivate, etc., etc., to make the character flash, and then finally re-enable collisions. And I have it check if the player's health is zero, in which case I reset certain variables. Um, I've set uh, your movement speed basically to zero. That way your character doesn't keep moving as it's dying because it would look weird. Um, set player sprite sheet to explode. You could also set animation state to explode. Uh, wait for one second and then change it back to the opening scene. And that is copy and paste across the different groups. Uh, another thing to note is that for enemies that are constantly moving between two locations and never actually stop, you want to make their idle animation and their moving animation to be the same. Because otherwise, when they get to the end of their travel, they get to the location where they're meant to turn around and go to the other coordinates, they will briefly go into their idle state and the animation frames will look wrong because it'll go into a completely different animation state. So to avoid that, just make the idle and moving animation the same animation. And finally, this is possibly the most important thing to do, is that before you go and make all your worlds and stuff, you want to set up all your enemies ahead of time and make sure everything works. As you can see, I have these five levels right here and each of these uh, represents one of the zones in my game because there are five major play areas. And each of these areas have different groups of enemies. So as you can see, I have in this level the Delta enemy base. So these are all of the enemies and all of their coding is correct. So all I have to do is copy an enemy and paste it wherever I want and I know the code will run correctly and I know that all of the code is identical. The only thing I have to change are coordinates on individual enemies that move back and forth between two points because that will vary depending on where you put them. But otherwise, as you can see, I've got everything set up perfectly. And while these enemies all look the same, uh, that's because it's the same sprite sheet, but they are set to different animation states, so they will appear differently in the game and they have different coding associated with them. So like this is a slime, but this one is actually 
change the animation state so it's actually a rodent of unusual size. This is really important for your game flow and making sure that everything functions properly. So, thank you for watching. I hope you've learned something about creating enemy AI for your Game Boy game through Game Boy Studio. I'm Okami the Wolf One, and if you like my stuff, check me out on Patreon and uh, get ready for the release sometime soon of Bazooka Bunny Bounces Back, only on Game Boy. Thank you and good night.